I'm not saying that our next speaker is a unicorn, but we all know that there are not that many people in our community today who can say they've been using WordPress since version 2.7 in 2009. Francesco has been in the WordPress community since, uh, in the community since he discovered it in uh, 2012, and he's been dancing around in the community since then. He became a member of the plugin team when Mika Epstein, or better known as Ipstenu, uh, stepped down about a year ago. He's now one of the reps of the plugin team, and today he's going to tell you all about his journey with the team. So please give the biggest round of applause for Francisco. <laughs> Thank you very much. I can see a lot of people around here. Thank you for coming to this talk. Uh, okay, so here today, I'm going to tell you a story about how the repository needed a new team of volunteers how we got, we got there, what we are doing to improve it, and what plugin authors can do to contribute to it. I'm Francisco Torres. I'm just a normal developer doing things with WordPress since a long time ago. I love cycling and swimming, and I have a bigotito, which <laughs> means a small mustache or little mustache in Spanish. And nowadays, I'm one of the volunteers in the plugin review team. I'm actually sponsored by SiteGround through the Fight for the Future program, and that allows me to contribute uh, a meaningful amount of time to the community. So thanks for that as well. OK, one month ago, I'm preparing this talk. And thinking about the approach, I remember school presentations. You begin with definition, history, and so on. You continue with that. And let's begin with, with a definition. This is an open source repository focused on software that extends the functionality of WordPress. A definition. But I think that this is, this is not good enough to say all this repository means to the community. So sit back, because I'm going to continue speaking for another 29 minutes. <laughs> Digging in the past, I find something new, wppplugins.org. Well, this is 2005, but it is news for me, maybe for you as well. This is a repository with 60 plugins that is actually the same repository we have today. Just in a different domain, different law as well. Back then, the requirements to add a plugin was to license it under our GPL compatible license and also send an email to Matt. This repository uh, already includes some of the perks we have today, like free hosting, version control, and also gives you greater visibility to the community. Also, this is still a bit technical, because you have to install plugins manually. Then I discovered wppplugins.net, that's the difference, .org.net, which is a project from Dr. Dave. This is a non-official website with an easy interface to find and download plugins. And using an additional plugin called WP Plugin Manager, you can easily install and update these plugins. But only the green ones, those, no. Yeah. Two years later, in 2007, along with WordPress 2.2, the first version of the official WordPress.org plugin directory is released. In this version, we can see most of the features we have today, like all the plugin information with uh, different sec sections, description, installation, screenshots, and so on, an easy to use interface, search, tags, uh, support forums, which are really useful today, statistics, and reviews with stars and so on. You know, everyone loves reviews. 2009, this continues to evolve mostly visually. 
as WordPress.org website evolves visually as well. In this visual evolution, I'm showing this plugin, Syntax Highlighter by Viper007 Bond, also known as Alex Mills. This plugin allows you to share code on your site without losing the formatting and highlighting the syntax. It serves a specific purpose. This plugin wasn't meant for everyone in every situation. Maybe it is mostly for developers, but it is beneficial for non-developers as well. Easily sharing code, that's kind of part of the open source culture, right? I'm using <coughs> this and other plugins from Alex Mills since a long time ago. I never knew him, but I knew his plugins, which are really helpful for me in different websites. By the way, new feature here, translations from the community. The author of this and other plugins, Alex Mills, sadly passed away five years ago because of leukemia. And he left a message to us. Since all of my plugins are open source, they are free to be forked by reputable authors in the WordPress community. It would mean a lot to have my legacy go on. Today, members from the community continue to maintain his plugins, which now suggest to donate to the Odegon Health and Science University. Today, plugins developed by Alex Mills are useful for more than one million websites built on WordPress. This is a community. This is mostly about how we can help each other. And I want to say that anyone, anyone is welcome to host their code here for free as long they meet the requirements. Here are the guidelines. Let's read them from top to bottom. Guideline one, plugins must be compatible with, I'm joking. Please read them back, back at home. Those are basically, quote well, think of the community and be a good person. But yeah, re read them. Somehow, the plugins directory is today close to get to a total of 60,000 plugins available. And I want to say thanks. Thanks for developers for uploading and maintaining their plugins. To users for trusting the directory and share your thoughts. To sponsors for keeping this running and also to all volunteers, not only volunteers reviewing plugins, but also helping in the forums, designing, maintaining the systems, etc. There are different teams in the community that are involved in the plugin directory. Support, meta, design, performance, core, etc. The main team behind the plugin directory is the plugin review team. And yes, it is all volunteers who maintain this. The duties of this thing are review plugins, directory support, handle security uh, reports, enforce guidelines, develop and evolve team's tools, write a documentation, and train new members joining the team. But why? Why we bother with all of this? Uh, we, we can do nothing and have fun. Imagine a scenario where the plugin directory had no oversight or control. Millions of websites used by millions of people use the plugins in this directory. We want a place where users can trust the pieces of software that powers their WordPress websites. This team is here to advise plugin authors about how to make their plugins secure, compatible, and compliant with the guidelines. Mika, Mika Epstein, you already mentioned her. She has been a volunteer to the plugin review team since 2012. For 11 years, 
she has been the main contributor, having reviewed more than half of the total submissions to the repository or the directory. Together with other volunteers, she played an important role in the creation of the current guidelines, communication with plugin authors, establish what to check for in the plugin reviews, and other improvements to the directory, such as making teamwork possible. Thanks to Mika for everything for all these years. In March 2023, she announced that she will be stepping down from Plugins Review by July 2023. The team lost its main contributor. Oh no, another WordPress drama. <laughs> okay, so I think that we already covered our the historic context and the background. Uh, let's begin with something new. In April 2023, I'm in contact, among other people, some of them are here, <laughs> uh, to be part of the new plugin review team. When I receive that call, obviously, the first I say is, no, are you crazy? I'm not going to do that. No, 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 that's not for me, no, bye, no, 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 <laughs> goodbye, no, 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 no. No, 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 please, no. This, this is too much work. This is a huge responsibility. No, 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 no. no the, it's, oh, here, here, yeah. Here is the, so I can, I can run away, yeah. Uh, the thing is that four weeks later, I find myself in a Slack channel with Mika and other members of the community as well as as other new volunteers. Here, we are learning all the team's tasks. It is May 2023, and we run against the clock before Mika leaves. A huge backlog of plugin spending review is growing day after day, and we can feel the responsibility and pressure from plugin authors. And also, besides uh, learning and reviewing plugins, we have other challenges, like create processes to work as a team, and also do anything that could help us be more efficient, and also create a process to bring new, new members to the team, more volunteers, and training them. In this period, we learned a lot. By July, Mika leaves, and we have to manage by ourselves. The plugin queue continued to grow for another three months. One of the team's most demanding tasks is plugin review. The review is a conversation between the plugin author and the reviewer. The goal of this review is getting the best out of the plugin to make it available to the community. This is how I do a complete review process for a new plugin submission. First, I go to a really, really special website that has all the pending submissions. And yes, this is WordPress. This is just a custom post type containing all the plugins in the repository. Here, I just open and sign to me the oldest submission in the list. At this point, I also put some 80s dance music because I need some reading to work on this. <laughs> then, I check all the information about the submission. This is what we call the paperwork. First, I check the name, uh, if that contains any track marks or names in a confusing way. I also check the description. Is this plugin allowed in the repository? And does it do what it says it does? And I check the author. Is this the right owner for this plugin? <laughs> I'm listening to music chats. Then I move on to my favorite part. <laughs> Obviously, I am developer, so. Then this is the technical review. We run analysis tools that are a mix of a lot of things. 
PHPCS, uh, bus scripting, static code analysis, and regular expressions. That's a lot going on at the, at the same time, I can, I can say that. This tool performs 171 checks, and 56 of those are new automated checks. Despite this, execution usually takes less than 20 seconds. For example, the tool looks for any kind, any kind, any kind, any kind of escaping issues. Here, it asks me to manually check the callback function of an add shortcut call. And this is because it is not able to check that manually. We have to, uh, it is not able to check that automatically. We have to check that manually. Here, this is another line of the report. It looks for the correct use of internationalization functions. Sorry, I'm Spanish. In this case, there are two international. In, can, can you say that? <laughs> internationalization. There are two internationalization calls that have variables in their arguments. And this is not okay. No, no, this is not okay. Because those need to be strings. There is a technical reason behind that. Because the translation parser, parser uh, needs to, to read them. So those need to be strings. The, the tool is so confident that this is wrong that it already brought that issue in the email to the plugin author. We try to automate as much as possible. In this period, we did more than 400 commits to these internet tools, adding functionality and fixing bugs. Every small improvement saves us seconds on every review, and also increases our accuracy. All this stuff is going to be ported to the plugin check plugin. Finally, the last thing I do in a review, and remember, I am still listening to 80s music. I execute the plugin in an isolated WordPress installation just to check functionality. You can see I am sick list. With our findings in this process, we either approve it, reject it, or ask for changes. And we, when we ask for changes, we send an email containing all the issues we found with links to documentation, examples from their code, and additional information that can help the plugin author. Sometimes this, uh, this email is huge. Who here has received this email at some point in their life? Oh, a lot of people. OK, I'm going to tell you something. If we told you something wrong in this, aim, in this aim email, sorry, and tell us, we make mistakes. Then the author will make the changes, get back to us, and we will review the plugin once again. We send around 2,000 emails per month, and we have 272 safe replies to create those emails. A year ago, I was scared with a queue of plugin spending review that wouldn't stop growing. There were over 700 plugins in the queue when we joined, and that picket at 1,300 plugins back in October. The estimated wait time was three months. Imagine that. Luckily, since October, we have been able to stop the queue from growing and also reducing it by about 100 submissions per month. And I want to share with you some statistics. Each plugin review takes an average of four to eight minutes. And every plugin uh, requires an average of five reviews before it is ready for approval. This means that for every hour a volunteer devotes to the team, they 
could take one to five plugins to approval. And you can see a little thing here, excluding cases of discontinued communication. What does that mean? Sadly, we never receive a response for around half of the plugins we review. This is a huge waste of our time. In the last 12 months, uh, we have been able to approve 2,200 plugins. <laughs> if you want to say a whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and we did some things to optimize our workflows. For example, when we see common issues in the plugins, we send an email with information about how to find and fix those. And they can fix those and get back to us. Also, the first review is based on automated checks and we do a comprehensive review with manual checks and so on uh, for those continuing the process. We do this because of you know, those people that don't reply to the first review. We also prioritize those submissions that are making a good progress and are closer to approval. The good news is that we have seen authors improve their code over time, and we are getting better submissions. They're using tools such just as plugin check, and they are making this process faster and easier for everyone. Improved tools, improved workflows, and better submissions reduce review times by two to three times, which is a lot. Today, we are more than 10 volunteers, and others are in the training process. The training process takes an average of two months and this is because we have to handle and have too many things into account. And experience is an important factor. By the way, we already have opened two processes for people to join the team in the last year. If you want to join, please pay attention to the Make Plugins uh, website because we expect to open new processes in the future. OK, how are you doing? I'm going to stop talking about us, about the team, and start talking about you. About plugin authors, those that <laughs> raise their hand a little bit, and potential plugin authors, because anyone with a little bit of code, code skills can submit a plugin to the directory, just following the rules. The community has some expectations about you and how you take care about the plugins. And let me clarify this. Not everything in this list is mandatory. Those are expectations. Or feel failure to comply with some of them could lead so to the rejection or closure of your plugin. I already talked about the two first expectations. Just be aware of the guidelines and be nice. Ask as a community member. If you have not read the guidelines yet, this is now your homework. Another expectation is that you are aware and apply best practices. You can get those best practices through documentation, but also on forums. Work camps, reading code, and practicing. If you haven't checked out the documentation yet, this is your homework too. Community expects that you maintain your plugin, and users also expect you to be receptive. Find out what's not working on your plugin. You can do that through comments in the support forums. Get feedback from the users. Test, detect, and fix issues. Evolve your plugin. Improve it. Add new features. And always remember to test your code before doing a new release. 
Now let's talk about some common issues we can find on plugins and how those can be solved. Here, when you develop a new plugin, you need to include some information about it. And you do that in two files, the readme file and the plugin headers, which is a small comment in the top of your main PHP file. In these files, we find some common issues, like not setting up the name correctly, links that aren't working, the tested app parameter, which we expect that to be the latest ver WordPress version uh, to th which this plugin was tested. Sometimes we don't get the latest WordPress version for new plugins, so yeah, check that out. And also inaccurate descriptions. We expect from descriptions to say what the plugin does and how you can do that with your plugin. I have a special mention to two parameters in these files, the stable tag and the version. Those are two parameters with different names in different files, but those need to have the same thing, which is the latest version of the plugin. I know that this is confusing, so please pay special attention to it. Another common issue is about prefixing, because all plugins must have unique names for some things, like functions, uh, namespaces, defines, class, globals, options, hooks, cons, transients, customs, types, taxonomies, okay, a lot of things. And I think I left some uh, without mentioning them. This prevents your plugin from conflicting with other plugins and themes, and actually also with the core of, of WordPress. To achieve this, we ask authors to prefix names with a string of more than four characters that also feels unique to that plugin. Now, let's continue with some security issues. Sanitizing, escaping, and nonsense plus permissions. The thing is that we find this kind of issues in more than 80% of the submitted plugins to the directory. And more than half of known plugin security issues are because of forgetting about this. It is really, really, really important that you be aware about this. Let's go with that. Sanitizing protects, protects your inputs. Every time you receive data from post, get, request, uh, even cookie, some server variables, you need to sanitize it as soon as possible. There are general PHP functions in order to do so, and there are also specific WordPress functions. For example, sanitize email, which is obviously for emails. Escaping protects your outputs. Any store or generated data needs to be escaped before being echo or print. Escape as late as possible, and also use the proper function for each contest. Nonsense and permissions protect requests by verifying they are legitimate. Basically, this checks that the person doing the request is the same person when processing the request, and also that person had the intention to do that request. In order to do that, you create a nonce before uh, doing the request, you send that nonce with the request, and you check the nonce uh, and permissions before processing the request. What a busy year. New people in the office, new responsibilities, lot of, lot of changes, and a lot of work. We want to keep moving forward. We already have some ideas for the future. We want to update and add common issues or questions to documentation, make it more practical. Also, maybe we can create learned resources. 
We also want to establish regular communication with plugin authors and improve the information given by the team. Also, we want to assist in the process to update the guidelines. There is a GitHub repository where you can go to collaborate with this. And we also want to continue improving the tools. And I left the most important thing for the end. Please don't go yet. This is a new tool that you can use to help yourself checking some of the things we discussed earlier. This is the plugin check plugin. This is a new plugin developed by the WordPress performance and plugin review teams that aims to help developers identify some common issues. You just need to install it, check the plugin you want to check, run the test, and that's it. Easy peasy. We really recommend you to use it when you submit or update your plugin. Even if you don't plan to, pu to publish your plugin to the WordPress.org plugin directory, use that. You will be making it more secure for your users. And when you use that, when you try to submit to the, to the plugin directory, it will save us, and I mean reviewers and authors, a lot of time doing the review, making them faster and with less effort. This tool already covers the most common issues we find during reviews, and we are adding new checks as we can. You can also help with the plugin development of this tool on GitHub. I believe that together we can make a better plugin directory for everyone. Be welcome to submit your plugin to the directory. It will be an honor to see you in a plugin review someday. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, we have some time for questions. I see a lot of hands, but this time I'm going first. Uh, so, obviously, everyone and their mom is currently using AI for everything. Mm -hmm. Are you planning on using AI to automate all of this as well? I think that would be great, because we do a lot of manual job with the reviews, and AI can help us with that. Uh, the thing is that we also need those reviews to be accurate. And sometimes you have, you, you know, uh, AI has hallucinations. So um, we are thinking about uh, training AI to do some things, which is not to do the entire review, but to check the report we already have, which is accurate, and discard uh, false positives because we have a lot of those. Yeah. So it, it will take a little bit of manual uh, process. Nice, that makes sense. Okay, now on to your questions. I know you, that's what you came from. Mm -hmm. um, we do have a mic runner. Here. Here. Mike. Oh, oh yeah. you're uh, uh, already, already ready. ready. <laughs> uh, so thank you, Francisco, great talk. Thanks. Um, I'm David from Poland, mm -hmm. and I'm thinking because web development involves rapidly and arguably, uh, WordPress coding standards, they, they sometimes don't catch up uh, quickly enough. And I'm thinking because um, we have a lot of usages, for example, like TypeScript in, in plugins right now, which if you apply coding standards to TypeScript files, it looks mm. awful. And sometimes also people use stuff like uh, PSL4 auto loading, which is like against the um, name con naming conventions for WordPress, also against the guidelines. I'm thinking, do you have any like internal um, guidelines for your team that you look at saying, okay, we, we are okay with this, but we don't encourage this publicly on the docs? Mm -hmm. And also, is this just maybe like an arbitrary call from the reviewer? Yeah, so the latest guideline in the, in, the gui in the plugin guidelines says some things. One of the things that it says is, is that the team can decide about uh, making exceptions for certain cases. And that is there because of that. Because we know that sometimes uh, there is a functionality of a plugin or there is something that we can't cover with the 
current guidelines or with the coding standards. So when that happens, we just check that manually. Normally, maybe you will have a false positive in, in the email uh, we sent to you, and you will have to reply us telling, hey, um, please look at this, because this works in a different way. That's normally of what you are checking for. So please take a look to it. In that moment, the reviewer that, that is checking the, the plugin will make a decision, which is either uh, allow that if the reviewer uh, decides that everything is fine with that, or take that to the team. We have a, a Slack channel for, for the team, and we discuss those kind of things, as well um, as other things, like uh, other things that happens in the directory, like guidelines violations, etc. But that's one of the things we, we check. So yeah, we, we check that manually in case that happens. My mic runner is so fast. <laughs> Hi, Francisco. First of all, uh, thank you for, for your work. Thanks. I have nothing but uh, good things to say about the plugin review team for more than 10 years now. So thank you. Uh, and so to my question, is there any plans to have some kind of automated tools um, not involving your work for updates? Because uh, what we see sometimes is that a plugin could be like 100% really good it, with the guidelines for the first release, and mm -hmm. then on the second release, it's a shipwreck. Yeah, uh, that's actually one of the objectives of the plugin check plugin. Uh, that you can you can have an easy tool to check out your own plugin after that, after you publish them and uh, it and so. Uh, but also we have other things in mind, yet in mind. Uh, the last week we published uh, a post in which we uh, said some things that we think about the future and go one of those were to check plugins uh, until they, they reach a certain number of active installations uh, by the team. So mm, that's something we are thinking about. Mm. To, to do that by, by the team, but you can also do that with the plugin check plugin. And we know that in the future, the plugin check plugin is going to, be, to get better uh, with more features. So that's one option for, for that. And if I understand correctly, that's something that plugin authors can do already today, right? Check every update th through the plugin. Yeah, they, they can check their own plugin. And well, with plugin check plugin, but they also can use PHPCS, which is a great tool with many years, uh, and they are improving a lot. All right. Are there any other questions? Yes, I see one. Hi, my name is Cristina. I'm from Guatemala. Hi. Um, there is a situation that I've noticed um, quite frequently we have sometimes plugins that haven't been updated for several years. And I wonder if, but we don't get notified of those things as, I'm not a developer, but as a project manager, let's say, I don't get notified about those things, um, at least not regularly. Mm -hmm. um, so I wonder if there is any point where you think that you may uh, have some sort of process where you can check with a developer more frequently let's say on a yearly basis, so that we don't wait three, four years, because when we update PHP or when we, I don't know, do uh, WordPress upgrades or stuff like that, it creates security issues mm -hmm. when, when it hasn't been updated, the plugin. So I wonder if you have that in mind or, or are taking that into consideration to communicate with the developers um, a little bit more frequently to make sure that those plugins are not going to be left on a side for the yep. bottom along? Thank you for your question. We, we have that in mind, and actually there is one thing that we are already doing. For every WordPress release, we send an email to all authors just to check out with them and tell them you may update your plugin. Optional, but yeah, you can do that. And we also give some information about the new features uh, the new version of WordPress has uh, for that plugin. So about Plugins that uh, aren't, aren't updated for a long time, that is actually tricky. 
because some plugins might be not updated for five years, and maybe they are working fine because they are doing a feature that is a small feature with no security flags. So maybe that's fine. Mm, in those cases, what the directory does is that that plugin is not uh, available in the search. So that's kind of disco discouraging uh, for, in for find and install that plugin specifically. But yeah, you mentioned about you having that plugin already installed in your WordPress installation. In that case, mm, I don't really know what to do about that. I don't have an answer to that. Uh, maybe the community can gather and have uh, any, any idea. Uh, one of the obvious ideas is to have a message in, the, in your WordPress uh, dashboard uh, in the plugins area telling, hey, this plugin wasn't updated for three years. The same message we have in the directory. But as I already told, that's tricky because some of them are going to work fine even if those are not updated. So that's something we, can, we, we need to think about. Uh, I don't really have a reply or an idea for, for that right now. All right, we have time for one more question and that's right here. <laughs> Uh, just a quick uh, question. What is the duration of the waiting queue for new plugins uh, now? Now it is around uh, 20 to 25 days, and that is increasing. And you will notice that because we are here. <laughs> we are not reviewing plugins. <laughs> so these people in the front, those are reviewers. I am as well. We are here having fun. So for <laughs> this week, that may maybe it is 25, it is going to get to 30. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> make, make us one promise, no reviews after the after party. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, with that, we've come to the end for today. Um, if you have any questions for our speaker, find him later. Uh, I guess you'll be around for a yeah. little bit. And I look, I have perfect oh. assistance here. This is for you, a oh, little gift you. Uh, from the organizing team. Thank you so much thank for your you. presentation. Thank you. <laughs>